Noon, by the pen and what they inscribe. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Noon, wal qalam wa ma yasturun. It is starting with one letter, Noon. We had already Surah Qaf, Surah Swad. This is the third one. Wal qalam wa ma yasturun. And by the pen and by that which they write. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ You are not, O Muhammad, by the favor of your Lord, a madman. مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ You, O Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are not by the blessing of your Lord, a madman, or a possessed man by demons, or crazy, not nothing of this sort. Now actually this was the first reaction of the people of Makkah. When the first way he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he came and, and he said, said, an angel came to me, I was alone in Hira, and this thing happened. So maybe a general reaction, and it was not in enmity, I think. It was simple reaction. Oh. Maybe some jinn has possessed him. Maybe it was some delusion, some illusion, some hallucination. What has happened to him? So that was the first reaction. And people started saying, he has gone mad, perhaps. He has lost his mental balance, perhaps. Perhaps he has been possessed by some evil spirit or jinn. But when the Prophet heard these things, he was hurt. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling him. No, don't feel hurt. Noon qalame wa ma yasturun. The pen and all this academic record that this pen has collected, it testifies that you, O Muhammad, cannot be a mad person. Nobody can say this. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ And indeed, for you is a reward uninterrupted. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ And for you, there is going to be a reward which will be unending. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed, you are of a great moral character. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ and surely you are on an extremely sublime character. Can any madman have this type of character which you have, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Actually, these people have gone mad. So you will see and they will see. So very soon, you will also see and they will also see. Which of you is the afflicted by a devil? Who among you was afflicted with madness? Indeed, your Lord is most knowing of who has gone astray from his way. And he is most knowing of the rightly guided. Surely your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his way, and he knows best who are rightly guided. These are the seven ayat. We end here. Then do not obey the deniers. Now this is later period, these ayat which are being revealed at some later time and joined here. So Muhammad says, you don't obey or you don't even listen attentively to these people who are belying you.
They wish that you would soften in your position, so they would soften toward you. They wish that you should be ready to make a compromise, so that they will also make a compromise. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَّهِينٍ And do not obey every worthless habitual swearer. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَّهِينٍ Don't obey the mean swearer. This is Walid bin Mughira or Akhdas bin Quraysh. هَمَّازٍ مَّشَّائٍ بِنَمِيمٍ and scorner going about with malicious gossip. Hamazim Mashaim bin Amin, the famer going about with calumnies. A preventer of good, transgressing and sinful. Manail lil khair, hinderer of good, mu'tadin, transgressor, asim, sinful. Cruel, moreover, and an illegitimate pretender. Utullin, harsh, and besides all that, of doubtful birth. Because he is a possessor of wealth and children. Only because he has wealth and sons? When our verses are recited to him, he says, Legends of the former peoples. Whenever revelations are recited unto him, he says, Fables of the ancients. We will brand him upon the snout. We shall put a seal on his prominent nose. Indeed, we have tried them as we tried the companions of the garden when they swore to cut its fruit in the early morning. Now a story of some people who owned a garden, some brothers, and the garden, you know, the fruit was ready to be plucked. So they made, made a decision at night that we shall tomorrow go and pluck the fruit. And they didn't say, inshallah. This story of those people who believe in Allah, who are not mushriks, who believe in Allah, but they are so much overwhelmed with this worldly life that they forget. Forget Allah. And secondly, because they are not keeping Allah's remembrance in their mind, their character goes down. Moral values go down. So this is a, in a form of a parable, this condition of most of the people who live in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given as an example. We have tried them just as we tried the owners of the garden. When they swore that they would certainly pluck its fruit in the morning. Without making exception. And they made no exception. They didn't say, inshallah, no. We shall definitely. Tomorrow we have to go. We have to do it. So there came upon the garden an affliction from your Lord while they were asleep. Now during the night, a visitation from your Lord visited it, the garden while they were sleeping. Some hot air blew, and the whole of the garden was burnt. And it became as though reaped. So the garden became as if it has already been plucked. 
فتنادوا مصبحين. And they called one another at morning. فتنادوا مصبحين. There in the garden this has happened. They are at their house. In the morning they are calling each other. Then they called out one to another in the morning. أن اغدوا على حرفكم إن كنتم صارمين. Saying, go early to your crop if you would cut the fruit. أن اغدوا على حرفكم إن كنتم صارمين. If you want really to pluck the fruit, then go early to your farm. فانطلقوا وهم يتخافتون. So they set out while lowering their voices. Then they started, departed. And they were saying to each other in low voice. Saying, there will surely not enter it today upon you any poor person. Let no needy and poor person enter it today. Why should they come? What right they have? We worked over this garden. We looked after it. We watered it. Now the fruit is our. But these beggars, these poor men, they gather so that they should also be given something. Why should they get? So see to it that today no beggar, no poor man enters there. Now this is the level of their morality. They have get, gone down so low. And they went early in determination, assuming themselves able. And then they went fully determined in their purpose. But when they saw it, they said, Indeed, we are lost. Now when they saw their garden, they said, Oh, we have forgotten the way, we have come astray. This is not our garden. Rather, we have been deprived. But then they realized, Oh, we have been deprived. The most moderate of them said, Did I not say to you, Why do you not exalt Allah? The middle one, moderate of them said, Did I not keep saying to you, Why do you not glorify Allah? Why have you forgotten Allah? Now they said, They said, Exalted is our Lord. Indeed, we were wrongdoers. They said, Glory to our Lord, surely we were the evildoers. Then they approached one another, blaming each other. Then they advanced one against the other, blaming each other. You did it, you did it. You made it. Made, made us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did that. And for that reason, we were for, we forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And the, in the end, They said, O oh, woe to us, indeed we were transgressors. Woe to us, surely we were all transgressors. Perhaps our Lord will substitute for us one better than it, 
Indeed, we are toward our Lord desirous. It may be that our Lord gives us in exchange a better garden than this. Surely we are beseechers to our Lord. Now the ayah, this is the lesson, the moral lesson of the story. Such is the punishment of this world, and the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they only knew. In this way, chastisement comes. But the chastisement of the hereafter would be much greater. Only if they had known. Because here, if one harvest is gone, you can hope to have the second harvest. But then in the hereafter, no harvest. No chance more. So, that is the chastisement. If you keep it away from your mind, just forget, just leave it. No akhira. Then, although they believe in Allah, and they are not mushriks, but forgetful of Allah and low in character. Most of the people belong to this category. Indeed, for the righteous with their Lord are the gardens of pleasure. Now, contrary to that, verily for those who fear Allah, for them there are the gardens of bliss with their Lord. Then will we treat the Muslims like the criminals? Shall we then treat those who submit to us in Islam like the guilty? If there is no akhra, then both become equal. People who are guilty and people who are doing good deeds, they are equal. If there is no akhra, no resurrection, no reward, no punishment. ما لكم كيف تحكمون؟ What is the matter with you? How do you judge? ما لكم كيف أفنجعل المسلمين كالمجرمين؟ ما لكم كيف تحكمون؟ What has happened to you? How do you judge? أم لكم كتاب فيه تدرسون؟ Or do you have a scripture in which you learn? أم لكم كتاب فيه تدرسون؟ is there a book for you wherein you study? That indeed for you is whatever you choose. That you shall surely have in the Akhra what you choose. Or do you have oaths binding upon us, extending until the day of resurrection, that indeed for you is whatever you judge? Do they have the oath from us regarding the day of resurrection? That you shall have whatever you judge? Ask them which of them for that claim is responsible. Tell whom. Ask him, O Prophet Sallallahu Who can guarantee this? Or do they have partners? Then let them bring their partners if they should be truthful. Are there any associates with them? If they are truthful, then they should bring their shuraka, those who they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ساق ويدعون إلى السجود فلا يستطيعون. The day the shin will be uncovered and they are invited to prostration, but the disbelievers will not be able. يوم يكشف عن ساق. The day when the shin will be laid bare, shin of Allah. Now we can't say what will be it, its form, but in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, there is a hadith from Abu Sa'id Khudri, he says it means this, that in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show to the people some of his grandeur, which he is referring as the shin, and then they will be asked to prostrate before Allah. يَوْمَ يُشْرَفُ عَنْ سَاقِنْ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ These unbelievers, disbelievers will not be able to prostrate at that time. They will try, they will want, but no. It will be made impossible for them. Because in the life before that, in the world, they didn't use to prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time what will happen? خاشعة أبصارهم ترهقهم ذلة وقد كانوا يدعون إلى السجود وهم سالمون. Their eyes humbled, humiliation will cover them, and they used to be invited to prostration while they were sound. خاشعة أبصارهم. Their looks will be downcast. ترهقهم ذلة. And humiliation will spread over them. وَقَدْ قَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ And they were used, they were, they were called to prostrate before their Lord when they were healthy and sound. فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ so leave me, O Muhammad, with the matter of whoever denies the Qur'an. We will progressively lead them to punishment from where they do not know. So leave me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And those who belay this Qur'an, We shall Step by step, lead them on whence they know not. We will give them respite and then pull towards Jahannam. Then some respite, then pull. Just as you know, somebody who is fishing, he, he, he lets the string go, then he uh, pulls towards him, etc. <laughs> And I will give them time. Indeed, my plan is firm. I will give them respite, but surely my plan is firm. Or do you ask of them a payment, so they are by debt burdened down? Do you, O Muhammad Sallallahu ask them for a reward so they are burdened with a debt? Or have they knowledge of the unseen so they write it down? Or they have the knowledge of the unseen and they are writing it down? فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ إِذْ نَادَى وَهُوَ مَكْذُومٌ Then be patient for the decision of your Lord, O Muhammad. And be not like the companion of the fish when he called out while he was distressed. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ So wait, O Muhammad Wasallam, for the command of your Lord. وَلَا تَكُنْ كَسَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ And don't be like the companion of the fish, Hazrat Yunus alayhi salatu wassalam, who without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left his nation, so he was punished. He was swallowed by a fish, and then when he 
you know, called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the belly of that fish, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. Then Allah excused him. And then he was vomited by the fish on the bear's coast of, as far as I think, Makran. فَسْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْتَ سَعِدِ الْحُوتِ So wait patiently for your Lord's judgment and be not like the companion of the fish. When he cried out while he was in anguish, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. لو لا أن تداركه نعمة من ربه لنبذ بالعراء وهو مذموم. If not that a favor from his Lord overtook him, he would have been thrown onto the naked shore while he was censured. Had he not a blessing from his Lord which reached him, he was actually already thrown on a plain ground near the coast. And he was masmoom. He was in disgrace. فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَجَعَلَهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And his Lord chose him and made him of the righteous. فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ But later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excused him, pardoned him, and he chose him again, who brought him nearer to him. فَجَعَلَهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And then he made him from among the righteous people. وَإِنْ يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرَ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ And indeed, those who disbelieve would almost make you slip with their eyes when they hear the message and they say, Indeed, he is mad. وَإِنْ يَقَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَفْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرِ And verily there is those who disbelieve will almost make you slip with their eyes, with their gazes. They used to see Muhammad Sassam with very piercing gazes, piercing eyes. Maybe to kill his will. Or it was also, you know, an occult science. So you can overcome somebody's will through this effect through your eyes. So they are doing so. Lama Samyo Zikr. When they are listening to the revelations and the admonition, Vayakuruna in Nahula Majnoon. And they are saying, but verily he is Majnoon. He has been either possessed by a demon or jinn or some evil spirit or he has gone mad. وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ But it is not except a reminder to the world. وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Whereas the reality is that it is nothing, this Qur'an is nothing, but an admonition and reminding for all the peoples of the world.